Hi, today I'm going to show you how to couple area elements easily in Sophistic. My name is George Schmidt and you can find me at Sophistic, who is a leading supplier of software for analysis, design and detailing in the field of structural engineering and for whom I am working as a consultant engineer. Ok, let's get quickly started today's episode. As you can see on my screen, I have defined two structural areas and I would like to couple these two structural areas either with springs or a rigid coupling, doesn't really matter. Um, unfortunately, I cannot do it in Sophie Plus in, uh, graphically. I need to use a text input in SSD. But let's have a look at the model definition here first. So in uh, group number one, with number one, I have created uh, the new structure area with the material of S355. OK, then I have also created another structure area with number two and assigned to group number three with an area of S235. I also uh, applied some load uh, on the bottom structure area uh, pointing in the gravity direction and uh, in the negative global Z direction with a value of 10 kN per square meter. The bottommost structure area also supported just to have a statically stable system. Um, let's quickly export the model to the database and let's go to SSD and have a look at the system what we get. So as you can see really in group number in group number one, if I click on the structural area, just a second, if I click on the structural area uh, number one, can see it is uh, there the, and uh, this is group number three and I would like to create the spring elements in between. So we can do that with the help of module SOFIMESH A. Uh, what I have created is a little text task here within the SSD task tree. First with the command SYSTREST I need to restart the system and with the command CONTROL REST2 I keep everything uh, I had defined previously in my model, so basically materials, cross sections, and so on. Then, in group number four, in a new group, I'm going to create a spring elements between group number one and three, which are my structure areas, and the vector of the springs will be dx0, dy0, dz0, so this is the vector of the springs, and the spring constant is uh, in the axial direction of the springs is 1 on the power of 8 kN per cubic meter. Uh, and in the transverse direction of the spring uh, axis is 1 on the power of 8 kN per cubic meter. And these constants are referred to an area of 1 meter square. OK, if I simply quickly uh, run this uh, Sophie Mesh A module, then you can uh, very nicely see uh, the spring elements in between the two structure areas. So basically this is what we wanted to achieve and our goal is done. And if I want to check my model, uh, then in a ASE module, I just simply analyze load case one and two linearly. So I click on the calculate button and we can see that load case one is analyzed. If I stop the animation, you can see the deflected shape from the self weight and also from load case two. Okay, so far so good. Uh, but uh, what if the, uh, so the reason why I was able to create the spring so easily was that the two structure areas were uh, topologically totally identical. So it means their mesh was absolutely uh, similar or very, very identical. And then one node could be easily coupled to another one. But let's see what the uh, what, what is the situation, uh, uh, what's going to happen when the situation is not so easy. So I'm just simply go back to my Sophie Plus model and I'm going to introduce one structural point uh, in my bottom most, on my bottom most structural area, like this. And if we look at the model from the perspective view, here we can see the structural point. Maybe we need this in the model because I would like, we want to introduce uh, a point load here 
or we want to introduce a support condition for example at this node and that's why we had to define this you can see uh, clearly that this structural point is in the plane of the bottommost uh, structure area okay and now uh, if we export the model you will found in the animator that the two uh, mesh the mesh of the two structural areas are not identical so if I'm going back and simply run my Sophie mesh A input to create the couplings as I did previously, then you can see that uh, it is it was very difficult for the software to find, for example, a pair for this particular node here in the top uh, structure area because the mesh is different and there is no corresponding node there. So we can not really use uh, this kind of uh, method in this way but we what we can do in this situation is go to the filter option for example and turn on uh, all the elements first and then turn off for example the uh, structure area defined in group number three and only export this mod uh, this structure area with the structural point here you can choose mesh only a partial system of the global model you need to select the object I'm selecting all the objects in the XY plane and I simply click OK and now as you can see I'm only getting one structure area in group number one so what you need to do in this case is simply create or copy uh, create a new quad element by copying it so uh, what I'm doing here is actually first I'm creating new quad elements in group number two. I'm creating new quad elements with material number three. And the way how I'm creating is actually uh, transform the quad elements that can be found in group number one with a vector of 0, 0, minus 50 millimeter. So actually it's a copy of uh, the structural area or the quad elements that can be found in group number one okay and then I will connect now the two new structure areas that can be found in group number one and group number two which is the newly created structure area with the same spring constants okay let's get run it And if we go to the system visualization, you can see very nicely that even though the mesh of the structure areas are irregular, still we can make the connection in between the two structure area. But it's very important to know or notice or remember that we can only do this if the two structure areas mesh topologically identical. And that's why we had to use a copy command. OK, finally, let's analyze this. Uh, model as well with the same input and we can see also that we have the very same uh, deflected shape okay I hope you got it that is for today thank you so much for hanging out with me I had a great time creating this tutorial and I hope you enjoyed watching it bye